And everybody's been watching this already here. All right. Hey, everybody. Bobby Latmore here on the High School Football School Board Show here live on the Varsity Sports Network. It's here we are live at Gators in Apopka here tonight. And I'm with Dan LaForce from the Atlanta Touchdown Club and Ben Trujillo from the High School Football School Board right. Show shown live on ESPN Radio 580 here tonight. But first, before we go live on ESPN Radio, we're here on the Varsity Sports Network talking a little bit of high school football. And gentlemen, what another great weekend this weekend with high school football. I tell you what, there was amazing games. You know, a lot of close games. You had some heartbreakers. Um, you know, everything's really lining up for one heck of a season that we almost didn't have. Yeah, I mean, I'm just getting ready for the radio show, guys. But, yeah, it was uh, definitely some great games on this uh, this week. No, Not really many upsets uh, besides one that we're going to definitely talk about later on in the show, uh, one that really hurt me the most, I'll tell you that. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, you and I covered Seminole Bartram Trail, which was probably the number one game in the state last Friday night. And all the hype drawn up about this Timmy McLean quarterback at Seminole, I mean, it was definitely come to the head uh, Friday night, wasn't it? I mean, he really put on a show. You know, and it was an amazing performance by him. You know, he was the difference maker, and it was very clear in the play calling, but he – he did some amazing things that were outside of the play calling. You know, his, his elusiveness really made the difference in that game, Bobby. Oh, no question about yeah. it. You know, we kept talking about when Seminole needed to have the play, had to have that play done and stuff like that. And you give the ball to Timmy, and he just did unbelievable. I mean, I'll tell you what, man. Unbelievable, yeah. That I'll night. tell you what, Tim McLean. I'm I trained a lot of quarterbacks. You know, I trained him when he was in eighth grade going into Seminole High School. I'm telling you right now, I looked at his dad the first day I trained him. It was at night. We literally put the car lights on. We were in uh, Eatonville, and um, he, I threw, I saw him throw the first football, and I looked at his dad, and I said, he's going to be the best quarterback to come out of his class in Orlando. And to be quite honest, the way he's playing right now, he might be the best quarterback in the entire state, not just in Central Florida, but in the entire state. I'll go with that. You know, I'm a USF Bull because I played there. I'm so happy he's committed there. I hope that he signs that dotted line because the way he is playing – don't be surprised that he gets bigger offers like Jimmy Horn is currently right now and some of the Henderson brothers. Um, oh, they're getting the big-time get offers. Offer from? Uh, Georgia Thank this past you. week. Yes, Just Georgia kidding. offered him and Penn State. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Tim McClain, I'm yes. telling you right now, is a special type of uh, caliber of quarterback, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him how he produces this week in a Final Four matchup. But special, special talent for sure. I, I, I don't want to see him go out of state as much as I am a guy that's up there in the north part and stuff like that. Tim McClain, I know you're watching. Go Bulls. Yeah. Stay, him. stay home. Right. Stay there home. You go. I and I tell you what, we watch. I love to see him stay in the state. Number yeah, one, no doubt. Because he's a Florida guy. His parents are here. No doubt about it. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a big advocate yep. of guys who who play in Florida, stay in Florida. Yep. Um, but but you know, another thing too is I've watched the South Florida games. Mm -hmm. I think Timmy McLean's got an outstanding shot to go in there and and start if not getting a yeah, 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 no doubt. No he, doubt. He, he he has got he's got an edge. And, yeah. Well, we have a we have a surprise guest today on our show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anthony Williams is in the house. He's a UCF commit so yes. i know if tim mcclain's yes. watching i know uh hopefully you know you guys might talk but i hope he stays with the bulls because we know history shows that they're better so well uh, right there you, you've got the, you've got two guys there. two <laughs> seminole county guys that are going to play and that's their big rivalry in college yeah. ucf the, the war on i4 that is always an outstanding game each year 100 um, my dad played at ucf so i know and, I, and of course me being at usf and my wife went to ucf uh, you know there's a there's a big history there so I'm just glad that Tim McLean's with you, did, USF. Did you guys like steal the uniforms from the Orlando Thunder last week? Or oh, you like can't that? you can't say those uniforms were not sweet. Those lime green were nice. It gave uh, USF an edge early in the first quarter. I, I, I think, that. I, I, think I think those were yeah. Oregon Ducks jerseys from three years ago. Unreal. Yeah, they may have got a discount on those. Hey, got USF, and it was like oh nice. What happened? So the other thing we're gonna it's good game. So, yeah. game. So the other thing we're going to talk about is the upcoming big, outstanding All-Star game. Yeah. Not an All-Star game. It's going to be a recruiting showcase, the Cure Classic, next Thursday night, December 17th, at Show Walter Field. Really we're going to be talking about that, about that as well. Yeah. I'm so really we're going to get ready to go live here on uh, on WDBO 107.3 and 580 AM here at, at, at about two minutes, a minute and a half. And uh, we'll start the radio show. You guys are going to get the additional content. We go to break. We're going to continue to talk. High school football here in Central Florida. We have got some outstanding games, and uh, I think you're going to like what we have to say. Yeah, and you're going to hear a lot of dudes of the week. I can't wait to announce those guys as well. Also, uh, we're going to go over all the playoff matchups. The final four matchups is happening this Friday night. 
Um, a lot of teams are on the road. A lot of teams, so yeah. uh, you won't, you, you know, I think there's one game locally that if everybody, you know, tunes in and checks that out, might be a doozy like uh, Dan LaFour says. I love that word. But, uh, but, yeah, we got big stuff coming up, guys. Obviously, the predictions later on in the segment, you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, but, guys, we're going to be live on ESPN Radio, WDBO 107.3 and 580 uh, AM. Uh, here shortly, so you're going to hear that as well. So Dan LaForce and I will be going over everything that f- Week 14 has to cover. Um, and then obviously, like he just mentioned, during the breaks, we're going to give you extra cover with uh, Mr. Bobby here with BSN Orlando and uh, just talk just talk football for the next hour. So guys, stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. Uh, but we're going to be live here in about 20 seconds on the radio. Bobby, you ready, man? Dan LaForce, you ready? Hey, let's roll this thing. We're live in about 10 seconds, guys. 10 seconds, we're live. Thank you for tuning in and watching. This is going to be a great, impactful show. And uh, we look forward to uh, another great, uh, great session. Welcome to the High School Scoreboard Show, presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity HR that makes a difference. We are at Gators Dockside in Hunt Club in Apopka, 3030 East Cimarron Boulevard, Apopka, home of All You Can Eat Weeks on Monday and Wednesday night, and now the official watch party location for the Cure Classic High School All-Star Game on December 17th. This is the coach, Dan LaForest, sitting in for Heath Ziegler. We're here with Bobby Trujillo, the quarterback Balin trainer. Trujillo, Balin. Balin, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby we got Bobby, we got Balin. Bobby Latmore sitting in with us from Varsity Sports Network. Balin, yeah. we're going to recap these last week's playoff games. Yes, we're going to have our dudes of the week. We're going to have this week's playoff matchup preview. We saw some insane playoff wins last week, some heartbreaking losses. And as always, we're going to predict those top five games in Central Florida. Yes, sir. We also have a special guest in the building tonight that we're also going to be interviewing. Uh, your Orlando Touchdown Player of the Year, Anthony Williams, UCF commit. So we're excited about getting to know him a little bit and what he has to offer for the Knights next year. But, Dan, how about how about we go over those playoff matchups from last week? Well, let's talk about what were the what were the takeaways from last week, Balen. Okay, well, uh, first before we get into those games, obviously one big game that we're not going to mention too, too much on this show is Foundation. What an incredible season they had. Unbelievable. They made history finally reaching the final four in program history against a, a team that, you know, has been a powerhouse, University Christian. They got over the hump over uh, Victory Christian, which was great. Uh, Tate Ewing had a phenomenal year at the quarterback position. I'm very excited to see what he does in his future in this sport. But, man, what a great season for Foundation, Dan. Unbelievable. You have also Oklahoma commit, right, Danny Stutzman. He is a phenomenal player. We're going to miss seeing him Friday night and talking about him. What a special young man. But congratulations to the coaching staffs, the fans, the the, the cheerleaders, everybody involved. Uh, yeah. Just congratulations on a phenomenal year. And I'll tell you, Coach Brad Lord has done an amazing job over there. And, and what a, a special group of kids. You know, I, again, congratulations to them. Yeah. They had an outstanding season. All right, Dan, let's get into these games. What was our first matchup game? Well, let's talk about that Apopka-Lake Mary game. Number six, Apopka, seven, number seven, Lake Mary, six. Wow. Regular season matchup, rematch, a pop of wins, Balin. Yeah, here's some uh, inside take on that game. Coming into this regional final matchup, Lake Mary won both of their rematches over Lake Brantley and Oviedo in blowout fashion behind great quarterback play from star Gunnar Smith. And the Lions were looking to avenge their 21-9 loss in another rematch game versus Apopka and was eight yards away from pulling off the upset. Once again, the difference maker in the ball game was Apopka quarterback Appalachian State commit Jaquan Loman, who scored the go-ahead touchdown to start the fourth quarter on a 58-yard rushing touchdown. He finished the game with 118 total on the ground. Apopka got a critical field goal block by Jaquan Harris and Myler, uh, Miller Termeru caught the game-winning pick in the end zone with just seconds left to play. Great job, Apopka going into the final four yet again. You know, an amazing game. Balin, number five, Lake Mineola, 
big win, 35-14 to over Tampa Gaither. Yes, this game, in my opinion, was the biggest surprise of the 6A playoffs as I even called the number two ranked 6A team Gaither to win this game in my prediction segment last week as this Gaither program was the same team to knock out Lake Mineola season last year, 41-7. to But this past Friday night, it was the Hawks who soared to a blowout win behind running back and quarterback Robbie Sanders who rushed for three touchdowns as well as running back Sedarius Walker's 153 yards on the ground. The Hawks totaled 238 rushing yards and 300 90 all-purpose yards on the night. The only reason Gaither even scored was due to trick plays. They got uh, bullied all night, and the Hawks are now playing for the 6A state semifinals for the first time in school history. That opened up in 2011, Dan. And, and I'll tell you what, a, a closer game than I expected. Number three, Edgewater, 28 over Mitchell, 21, Balin. Man, this regional final game was one of the biggest upsets that I personally watched or covered almost taking place Friday night in College Park as I predicted this game to be over at halftime. But Mitchell heard the prediction and took it personal all over our social media outlets and gave the Eagles a lot more than they could handle for most of the night, even taking a 7-0 lead in 14-7. But great quarterback play by Kanan Mobley, an Alabama athlete commit, Christian Lee around the ground for touchdowns, along with junior star athlete Jeremiah Connolly picking off Mitchell and scoring the game winning touchdown from 19 yards out with 16 seconds remaining in the game. But that was the difference in the win, and the Eagles find themselves back in the 7 8 Final Four. And here's our first heartbreaker number one Jones falls to Jesuit 24 to 40. Yeah, this was an upset of the week and potentially the biggest upset in the entire 2020 state playoffs in all classifications as Jones came in this regional final matchup as the number 15 ranked team in the entire country, according to Max Preps, and pretty much handed Jesuit the win with giving up four huge turnovers, three of which in the red zone. That led to 20 second half unanswered points. Jones had an early 10-7 lead, and just before half, they fumbled on the 10-yard line on a running back screen, and three plays later, Jesuit scored and putting them up 14-7 and went into the break with a 21-17 lead. Jones opened up the second half on a near-perfect drive and put up put them up 24-21, but that's when it all went wrong for the number one team in our Central Florida rankings. Jones, Holy Cross quarterback commit. Joe Pedensky threw five touchdowns, also ran a, a touchdown in from one yard out on the fourth and goal for the upset. Jones star running back Steven Sparrow had a rushing touchdown, and running back Jaquan Harris finished with 117 yards and two rushing touchdowns. How about number four Osceola, 17-7 over Newsom? Man, this was a game. Osceola's defense yet again dominated all night with three interceptions, two of which was to Jerry Wilson, and also a 32-yard scoop and score from linebacker Nolan Eddy in the first half. Running back Durandy Swint rushed for 105 yards and a touchdown to send the Cowboys to their 10th state Final Four since 1982. This was a, this is tied Eagles Edgewater for the most semifinal appearances for the team still remaining, and this was yet another road game uh, victory uh, heading into Saturday matchup with Miami Palmetto to reach the uh, state championship. And last week's game of the week, oh, number man. two Seminole 42 over North Florida number one team, Bartram Trail 28, 42-28. Seminole, Bobby and I called that game on the NFHS uh, NFHS network that was outstanding. Balin, tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, this was the game of the week, and boy, it lived up to all the hype. Bartram Trail came into Bo- Bokey Town and ranked number one in our North Florida rankings as Seminole looked as a slight underdog, but the first half had people headed towards the exits and switching to other games online as the Knolls went up 35-7 to behind two huge rushing touchdowns from 50 and 34 yards from USF QB commit Tim McLean and also had a passing touchdown to Lawrence Jones just before half. But those that left early missed one of the most improbable comebacks as Bartram Trail scored 21 straight points, cutting the Seminole lead to 35-28 with just over 10 minutes left. But a beautiful 23-yard touchdown from McLean to star wide receiver Jimmy Horn with 641 remaining in the game was the icing on the cake. Now they make to look uh, an avenge loss last year to Apopka in the state uh, regional semifinals. Uh, This is their fourth Final Four appearance since their 2008 state championship. Seminole, great job. Uh, Now we're going to be joined by one of our guests tonight, Lake Brantley running back Anthony Williams. Outstanding game. Just He was the week three player of the week for the Orlando Touchdown Club. Was just crowned the Orlando Touchdown Club Offensive Player of the Year. UCF commit. Anthony, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I tell you what, you had an outstanding season. You rushed for 1,384 yards, 14 touchdowns on 219 carries. That's a 6.3 yard average per carry. 
on a team that is not balanced. When you play Lake Brantley, you're playing against a running game. You guys threw for 200 yards total all season. I, I think it's very well deserved. Yes, sir. Uh, after uh, credit to my old line, you know, other backs as well for blocking. Uh, amazing quarterback, Noah Hudak. So it was really a team effort, honestly, for me to get this award. Thank you. I, I tell you what, you know, you playing at Brantley, what was the biggest takeaway? What are you going to take to UCF, your memories of being a Lake Brantley Patriot? Um, I think just the uh, just the running mentality and just the uh, just the family atmosphere as well. You know, Brantley's always been my family since I was little. I've been playing for the Brantley Patriots for forever. You know. I know UCS is a family-oriented uh, team as well, so I'll just take that and uh, keep my nose down and just keep working. You know, you're one of the top recruits in the state. Why UCF? Um, I think it was the perfect fit for me, honestly. Um, I'm a Florida kid, so why not stay home? You know, amazing program, American, amazing academics as well. So I just didn't see any other reason for me to go anywhere else, and it was the perfect fit for me, honestly. I love it. I love that you're staying home. I love the fact that we can come watch you play on Saturdays. And, uh, and you know, I, I'm excited to see – yeah, you're a little bit different than some of the backs that we've seen this year for UCF. You know, have you talked to the coaches about how you fit into their scheme? Uh, yeah, I've, I've talked to Coach Tucker and Coach Hype all about that. Um, I'll talk to, you know, I play with Demir's good as well. So um, I just talked about that my side, I'll be one of the bigger guys, so I'll be able to ground and pound and also break away speed as well. So. I think I'll fit pretty well in that system. And you're going to be back with one of your old buddies, Demarius Good, too. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited. Uh, I tell you what, we're excited about that as well. Um, you know, some of the you – know, what was your favorite game this season? Uh, favorite game this season? Um, it probably had – it was – I can't pick one. But I think it was probably the, the big run we went on after being down one and three. We went on a long winning streak as we came together, kind of like what happened last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, um, we were down one and three, just came back, came together as a brotherhood and just pushed and made a playoff run. But uh, it, was, it was fun. You know, and that was one of the things that I took away from Lake Brantley's season is I felt like you guys got stronger every week. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there were things that, that was missing beginning of the season. You guys improved on it. I thought you were more of a complete team at the end of the season. And I was very proud of you and your teammates of how you guys made those adjustments and really got that done. Yeah, um... It was, it was hard being down one and three and not know, really knowing what was next for us. But um, the defense played phenomenal the remainder of the season. Offense came together as well and played just tremendous football. So it was really a team effort, and I couldn't be more proud of my guys. Well, I tell you what, we're proud of you. We're excited for you. We can't wait to see you in that black and gold next year. Anthony Williams, Lake Brantley, future UCF Knight. We'll be signing here next week, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't wait to see that. Balin, what, you know, what was your takeaway from Anthony? Yeah, so we got to talk about him a lot this year on the show. He was our player of the week several weeks in a row as well. The kid is special. I'll tell you what, I watched his film. I mean, there's, he's probably, if not the best running back in Central Florida. And again, one of the top running backs in the entire state. I'm excited to see him at UCF. I wish he was going a little bit more west uh, towards USF. But, uh, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm happy to see you know him live out his dream at the next level and uh, play there. And I'm, I'm excited to even cover them. Um, obviously, uh, if you guys know a little bit of my history background, training quarterbacks, I have Quadri Jones there. Um, so I'm excited to see him and uh, him and Anthony Williams go together and hopefully see them as the, the future uh, backfield at the uh, the Knights in the coming years. So, well, well, you know, really I was just watching, that. you know, the Georgia Bulldog, Bobby Latmore, getting it in Anthony's <laughs> ear. And, and, you know, we can't have that. You know, we can't have going to Athens. He's staying right here in Orlando for the next four years. Yeah, UCF beats good competition. So I don't think that Georgia's in the uh, in the running for that, that young man. <laughs> But yeah, so that was uh, that was that was pretty good stuff, Dan. What what is, obviously is your touch, Orlando Touchdown uh, Player of the Year? He is in the running for our uh, high school football scoreboard Player of the Year as well. Um, talk talk a little bit about your and what your decision making was to make him that player. You know, this year was very. I tell you what, there was so many great players, so many great stats. It's always very difficult. It wasn't just me. You know, obviously you had a lot of contribution to that decision. Uh, Heath Ziegler as well as Low Wood from Excel Speed Training, and, you know, I've, I've loved how we've been able to handle kind of looking at so many great performances all year. Yeah. And, um, but really, I, I think the deciding factor was the fact that Anthony was able to do this in the offense that he was in. Yeah. You know, it, when you're in a balanced offense and, and you can throw deep and, and kind of keep the safeties back, there's no secret at Lake Brantley. Right. You know exactly what they're doing, yeah. and they're coming at you. And for him to get that kind of yardage and that average, 
I, you know, I, I think it was a no-brainer. Yeah, and because of how special he is, he's obviously opened up the, the offense for Noah Hudak, who had a phenomenal year as well at the quarterback position. When you have someone who has that much offensive threat, it opens up the pass, or the passing game as well as lanes for the quarterback. So that obviously helped Noah have a phenomenal year. So, you know, when you're a player like that that can help people around you, that's when you know you're special. But when we come back, guys, we're going to talk about our dudes of the week here at uh, Gators Dockside in Apopka. Dan LaForest will be back right soon. So, yeah, guys, that was our Good first job, segment. Yeah, that was our first segment. Went over all the games. A lot of information you know, took place, uh, obviously, in that um, – I try to get you guys the most important, obviously, information from the games that happened this past week in the regional semifinals. Now we're in the final four. Obviously, uh, Anthony Williams is here, UCF commit. You guys can see him live and and well, as um, well as Blake Brantley teammates. You know, yeah, over yeah. here you enjoying here enjoying watching. the all you can eat boneless yeah. wings right here at Gators Dockside. Yes, uh, in in Hunt Club, and and you can go to any of the Gators Docksides around Central Florida, and there is one near you wherever you're located. And, and I tell you what, outstanding service, amazing food, and we're happy to be partnered up with Gators Dogs. Yeah, at least I know I am. So, <laughs> Bobby, you have anything for uh, Anthony Williams, man? I know you you want to talk know, about your little running back U University well, over there. You know, we, we'll talk, but he, we, you know, watched him play several times this year, and you did yeah. a fantastic job. You were enjoyable to watch, especially the Lake Mary game at the beginning of the year this year. You guys were that was a tough one for you to lose, but you were phenomenal during that game right there. Talk a little bit about, you know, to the fans out there and stuff like that, you know, as far as being a high school football player this year in COVID, what, I mean, what were some of the things that were different from the past years? Um, I think what was different was we couldn't really be all together at the beginning of the season. Right, we're all spread right. out in different groups and stuff. So I think that's probably the hardest thing, not being able to practice our defense immediately and do like seven on seven and passing stuff like other schools are doing. But um, I think that's probably the hardest thing, not being able to gel what we can do versus our own defense and then, Schemes of other defenses as well early during the season. So I think that was the hardest thing. How tough was it to come back uh, to play this fall without actually having a spring, a summer? I mean, how tough was it? Uh, it was it was really tough. A lot of our guys, you know, as you would think, out of shape a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was kind of hard. Everybody wasn't all – they weren't in football shape. So it was kind of hard for everybody to get back to what they were before. But they addressed it quickly and uh, couldn't be more proud of them. That's awesome. Awesome. Man. awesome. Who was your first offer? Uh, FAU, my freshman okay. year. Wow. Was and then Kevin down there at the time? Or was yes, that, Kevin was down there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Did you have a Miami offer? Yes, sir. Let's, 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 let, we can debate that for a second here. Miami versus George and running back Hughes. I'm pretty sure UM probably wins that battle. Yeah, a little bit. Without a saying. doubt. So, so who was your final three? Final three? Um, I was down to Louisville, Duke, and UCF. Wow. wow. Duke. Duke. Yeah. So you're a high academic guy. Yeah, my mom really, she really loves Duke. What do you want to major in? Um, I, I'm not sure yet, but I was thinking okay. somewhere in the sports realm. Okay. So just stay in the sports realm would probably be. Yeah, I did sport business management. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Obviously, communications, you can do stuff like this as, in yeah, the future. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, and, and I think UCF has a phenomenal communications major, so uh, department actually as a whole. So that's pretty cool, yes, man, you know, for also, sure. Also, you can come work with me at Super Finance Management <laughs> and get into sports finance. Yes, sir. Yeah, you'll probably be well, helping him uh, his bank account when he goes to the NFL. I don't think he's going to be doing as much of a nine to five job soon. So I think this will be one of the this will be one of the Dan always tries to win in other departments. There'll be one Jeez. of the doubts for that, no doubt about that. So yeah, take care of my boy Quadri Jones though. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Definitely. You know who he is? Yes, sir. Played at Jones. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's number twelve. So he's going to be special. So hopefully, you can see you guys in the backfield together. That'd be special, man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, but, guys, we're going to be live in about, uh, I'd say, one minute with ESPN Radio and WDBO 107.3 FM. This is, again, Anthony Williams here for you guys. Obviously, again, live and well, and we'll be at UCF next year. Um, you know, he has a couple days before signing day, so if he decides to go to USF or Miami, I don't think that's a wrong choice. But I think he's pretty solid on his night uh, commitment there. It's which, a smart choice. Yeah, yeah, it's it really great. Is. And he gets to come back in Friday nights right. and maybe give, you know, pregame speeches right. to the to the guys right. and, uh, and just, just be there. Stuff, yeah, yeah so that's the stuff that you look yeah. forward to the most, uh, especially when you make it to the next level. Uh, but, Dan, that's a, that's a pretty special athlete. And like I said, he's your Orlando Touchdown Club Player of the Year. Um, yeah, yeah, he's so a definitely a special special talent. And, and there were a lot of good candidates. But he, when you look at it overall, he's definitely that guy. So, again, guys, we're going to be on in about, what, I'd say about 30 seconds. About 30 seconds. Um, 
and uh, you'll get to hear the next segment. The next segment is our Dudes of the Week. We talk about this every week. This is our Players of the Week. So you're going to hear us go over three nominees, a Player of the Week on offense and defense, and then just one special team overall nominee uh, that won that award. And that stuff will be out on Twitter and stuff, so you guys get to see that as well. Yeah, and stay tuned because we're going to be doing the Cure Classic All-Star Rosters, and we're getting ready to go live here in a second. Live again. All right, this is the coach, Dan LaForest. Welcome back to the high school football scoreboard show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Balen Trujillo is here with me. We are live from Gators Dockside in Hunt Club, 3030 East Summeron Boulevard in Apopka. Visit one of your 14 local Gators Dockside locations around Central Florida with your family for your favorite sporting events and the official home of the Cure Classic Watch Party. If you can't go to the game, go watch your teammates, your coaches, your parents. Go to Gators Dockside. They're going to be streaming the Cure Classic live. That's pretty special, man. Next Thursday night. So, uh, Dan, we got some dudes of the we week the this dudes week. Of the week. So, uh, man, Balen, man, let's talk about those honorable mentions. How about the offense? Yeah. So, on the offensive side of the ball, the first nominee is Jaquan Loman, a Popka quarterback, Appalachian State commit, rushed for 118 yards and scored the game-winning TD on a 58-yard run to help the Blue Darters beat number seven Lake Mary seven to six to advance to the Final Four. Our second nominee, Daquan Harris from Jones, running back, rushed for 117 yards and two touchdowns and a tough 40-24 to upset loss to Tampa Jesuit. And our final nominee is Robbie Sanders, Lake Mineola quarterback, scored three rushing touchdowns and also finished 11 of 16, passing for 152 yards in the win over Gaither, 35-14, to advance to the Final Four. And Balin, those are Man. amazing performances, but who's your dude? My dude of the week, or I, I should say our dude of the week, Tim, a.k.a. Q. McLean, seminal quarterback, USF commit through two touchdowns, also rushed for two touchdowns in a huge 42-28 win over number one North Florida-ranked Bartram Trail to advance to the Final Four. And Balin, I was there at that game it, it, again. I, I was talent. He's special. He's special. He is what, different. He, he, you know, I'm, I'm calling it right now on the radio. I believe, I train a lot of quarterbacks, he is the number one quarterback in his class in the entire state. There's not even a question. The he, way he's playing and performing, it's unbelievable. He is no doubt special. Hey, let's talk about that defense. Who are your honorable mentions, Balin? Yeah, first honorable mention, my uh, Miller, Tara Mayu, Apaka defensive back, game-winning interception in the end zone to seal the 7-6 to win over number 7 Lake Mary and put the Blue Darters back in the Final Four. You might see him with Florida Fire this year. Stay tuned. Our second nominee, Jerry Wilson, Osceola, two huge interceptions for the Cowboys in their 17-7 to win over Newsom to advance to the 8A Final Four. And our last nominee is almost like a whole entire defense, Lake Mineola defense as a whole. But linebacker Drake Harwell and Ethan Cole stood out as the uh, as Harwell finished with nine tackles and a sack, and Ethan uh, finished returning a pick six back for 88 yards to beat number two 6A ranked Gaither 35-14 and send the Hawks to their program's first ever Final Four appearance. And, and Balin, we had questions about Lake Mineola's yes, schedule. We, did. we had questions. I think those questions have been answered. Oh yeah, it, without a doubt. <laughs> and we'll talk about that later on in our preview uh, for the matchups. All right, Balin, our dude of the week on defense. This is a crazy one because he usually plays offense, but, man, big-time play. Jeremiah Connolly, Edgewater Jr., caught an interception on Mitchell's biggest drive of the game and then scored the game-winning touchdown to help the Eagles win 28-21 in advance of the 7A Final Four. You also might see him with a Florida Fire uniform this 707 season. And, Balin, I know this is your special part right here. Tell us about the special teams. Special teams player of the week, Jaquan Harris from Apopka at a critical fourth quarter field goal block that could have given the Rams a lead but helped cap the 7-6 to six win then headed back to the final four for the Apopka Blue Darters. It was some outstanding performances, Bailey. Man, unbelievable and it's just it's just getting started. We're getting to the real games you know, here. You know the best part of this is when you hear these performances, you can't wait to hear their names again next I know, week. I know. You know, and, and, and that's it. the beauty you know, that's the beauty of the whole thing yep. and um you know, we've got some big games we're going to talk about here in a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, we're going to go over the so, entire final final four. Right, All right, them. right. And, and and we're going to talk about a big matchup that everybody's talking about. Bokey is heading to the Hoka Hay. Yes, they are. the APK. Man. And we're going to talk about that. 
But when we come back, we're going to break down Friday night's big matchup and Balin's predictions. Yes, Balin's predictions right here on the High School Football Scoreboard Show live from Gators Dockside and Hunt Club here in Apopka where we have had an awesome time tonight. Yes, sir. We'll see you here in a few seconds. Nice. That was our second segment, guys. Again, that's Dudes of the Week. If you've been with us the last couple weeks, you obviously know what that is. Uh, players watching live right now, again, uh, congratulations on winning those awards. Uh, it's it, it's definitely contribute to you and your team's success. Uh, the better you perform, uh, the more chances you are going to win for your team. So there's four teams remaining in Central Florida for the final four. I'm really excited about all four teams. One team in particular is a, a huge surprise. We talked about their Cinderella season last year on our show lake mineola they keep proving us wrong and not only are they proving us wrong they're putting statements out there saying hey you want to look at our schedule yeah maybe every single team on there is under 500 but when it counts we're winning by more than 21 you know and and that game against gaither was definitely a shocker like we mentioned before gaither knocked out knocked out lake mineola last year in their big run 41 to 7 wasn't even close this year, yeah, the Hawks had a different story book, uh, book ending there when a blowout 35-14 win. And like I mentioned, Gaither only scored on trick plays, literally halfback passes. That's the only, and it was in the first quarter to tie the game up at seven, and then they did it again later on. Uh, I mean, that is the if that's the only way you score, you know a team is desperate to find points. And man, Lake Mineola, I, and I, I, am I mistaken? They're home this week. Are they home? Is it at Lake yes, Mineola? Yes. Oh, it's my goodness. Lake Guys, Mineola. this is the team you're going to want to watch. Go watch them personally to hopefully go to their first ever state championship for their program's history. Again, this team started back in 2011. Guys, I graduated in 2010. And uh, so that means the next year, Lake Mineola became to an existent for a football program. And look, we're here talking about them live nine years later, competing for a state championship berth. Con I mean, I, I can say congratulations all I want, but... Man, they just keep proving us wrong. So, again, Apopka almost uh, almost obvious in the way that they were, they were bracketed. Edgewater, phenomenal year again. The way that they were bracketed, they had a nice, sweet road. Uh, now they got a nice test this weekend to prove themselves. Um, and then uh, the fourth game uh, is Osceola, who also had a pretty nice road. And I think we, we are guaranteed, at least guys in my opinion, to have, I would say, two, possibly three. State championship berths for teams in Central Florida. I'm hoping for three. Obviously, one has to go between Seminole and Apopka, and we're going to go over that matchup later. Yeah. But I'm excited about these teams, guys. What about your thoughts? And, and the thing, Bobby, you know, we only have a few more minutes with Bobby. Bobby, you know, give us some insight from what you've seen well, here with the last few games. Seminole and Apopka going for the rematch from last year. Apopka winning that one. 20 to, to zip. To go to the state championship, and um, it was an amazing game because we covered that last year, too, on the Boston okay. Sports Network. Nice. Um, and, it, you know, you, Apopka had that defense that was outstanding last year. Several commits already D1 commits. One at your on school. Lot. Yes, he is. Georgia. He very well, too. Yes, he um, is. But it's, it, this is a different year. Um, Apopka losing everybody they did last year. Seminole just regloading again. Yeah. You know, you thought they'd hurt with Coach Lodge coming in, but no, he just reorganized everything a little bit to his fine-tuned some things the way he wanted and, to go, and, and it took off. Man. And, and, yeah. the, and the thing for me, and I've talked about this with Seminole all year long, what was – what was so impressive to me is this was finally Timmy McLean's team. This was his right. offense. You know, every year you hear about Timmy McLean and O'Shea Baker. Timmy McLean and this guy and this guy. We really didn't know who Timmy McLean had around him until the season kind of evolved. All of a sudden, Jimmy Horn is one of the top deep threat crazy bat, uh, wide receivers in the state of Florida. Jimmy Horn. They've got four outstanding running backs they can shift and rotate it it's one thing to have a good running back but when you've got four good running backs that don't get tired i think that's pretty special about Seminole. And, and again what we saw in the bartram trail game bobby was you know it was just dominance you know even in the third quarter when bartram trail came and and, and, and snuck back in right Man, Seminole put their foot on the gas, and it was over with. You know, one thing we saw last year, too, with Seminole is that they hung in there, but they always had that lull in one of the quarters. Yeah. It didn't matter, half a quarter or wherever they were. They always had a lull in the game a little bit. And last year against Apopka, they couldn't weather that lull. Right. Yeah. And Apopka just took it to them and took advantage of that lull. This year with Bartram Trail, you saw Bartram Trail come back in that third quarter, 35-28. to 28. 
Man, I mean, they scored three, unex yeah. three un un unanswered uh, touchdowns to get Bartram Trail within one score. One Ten minutes left. That. Yes, Ten minutes it was left. in the fourth quarter. But then again, Seminole took it, put it in the man's hands, Timmy's he hands, did. and he took it down, took him down the field. Tim so we got about two so. minutes left. We got two, two minutes left. What we're going to do in the next segment is we're going to talk a little bit about the games coming up this weekend, um, but we're also going to get into the Cure Bowl, the Cure Classic. Yeah. We're going to talk about the 80-man player selection for Orange and Seminole County and announce those right here live on Varsity Sports Network. You know, Varsity Sports Network, this is the official home of high school sports now, and we are excited to be working with Bobby Latmore and look for more content in 2021. There are some exciting things that are happening. You might see me on a show. Be true, baby, be true. <laughs> That'll be interesting, I'll tell you that. Uh, but, man, yeah, like I said, we're excited. We finally partnered with BSN Orlando with the High School Football Scoreboard Show. Hopefully you guys see us year-round in other uh, areas. You guys watching athletes, you know, some of you guys are doing basketball now. That's starting up, obviously, other sports like lacrosse and, and stuff like that. So we're going to be hey, hopefully softball. more involved. Softball. I love baseball, watching softball. Right, so stuff that Heath Ziegler likes to watch and play uh, that he might be good at. So, um, And, and no. for those of you guys that are getting Golf. sick of me by this time, Heath will be back soon. Yeah, I love Heath, man. Hey, like I said, he's the reason why I'm here. Um, so big shout out to Heath Ziegler and his vision with the High School Football Scoreboard Show. Absolutely. Um, and, and he's going. done a phenomenal job. Going. Yep, and we're, we're just getting started, guys. So we're excited. And uh, BSN Orlando will be the face of high school sports in Orlando, and we're excited uh, about that. But, guys, we'll be back on in about 10 seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds. We're going to be live for our third segment going over the entire Final Four game previews and the Cure Classic Bowl selection players and talk right here on VSN Orlando. All right, All right. Welcome, welcome back to the High School Football, football, football scoreboard, scoreboard Show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, benefits HR technology, technology, payroll, and scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Balin, this is what's on tap. This is the coach, Dan LaForest. We got Balin Trujillo. Balin, this is what's on tap for Friday night. Some more really big matchups. Final four. You win, you are playing for the big one. And here's the thing. We could very well be seeing a Central Florida state championship. We've already got three state champions here, two state champions. Yes. In, in, in Central Florida, and we could very well have two more. Three. Three state three no, no, more. No, no. Yeah, I, I think three, but we'll go over our predictions later. Yeah, then. we'll go over that. <laughs> All right, but we got, here, here we got, we've got. Uh, What's our first game? The first one's 8A, number one Seminole, at number five Apopka. Wow, so uh, this is the rematch of last year's regional semifinals in the game, which Apopka won 20 to zero. Seminole's perfect with the blowout wins over Gainesville, Lake Brantley, Flagler Palm Coast, University OC, and Sandalwood, and a completely hard-fought victory over Spruce Creek, Mainland, and Lake Mineola. Apopka's 8-3 with wins over teams like Dr. Phillips, Lake Mary twice, West Orange, and Winter Park, and three tough losses versus number 16 nationally ranked Jones by one, West Orange without Jaquan Loman overtime by one, and um, a, the Mayor's Cup to Akiva 14-7. Seminole's defense only gives up 11 points per game compared to Apopka with 8 points per game. Seminole's offense is scoring an average of 29.5 points per game compared to Popka's 19. Okay, Seminole USF commit is a player to watch. Tim McLean is 88 for 143, 1,226 yards, 13 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Also 58 carries, 237 yards, six touchdowns. And the player to watch for Popka is the guy we talk about every week, Appalachian State commit. Jaquan Lohman, he is 43 of 69 passing, 572 yards, three touchdowns, seven interceptions, but has 152 carries, 992 yards, and 14 touchdowns on the ground. Those are your players to watch. It is a quarterback matchup, but man, Dan, what are your thoughts on the seminal Apopka matchup to go to the state championship? I think it's going to be down to the defenses. You know, you have to contain, if, if you're if you're a Popka, you've got to contain Timmy Timmy McClain. Yeah. If, if you're Seminole, you've got to contain Jaquan Loman. Man. But, you know, Apopka's been the heartbreak kids literally every every year. Yeah, I mean, every, every week this season. They've either won by small margins or they've lost by small yeah. margins. And but who's the, de the deciding factor in that game is always... Jaquan Loman. It's going to be. Well, so, and, and really, I mean, Seminole, 
without, without Timmy McLean. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Bruce Creek was on. Bruce Creek. That hey. was a very close game. But I'm telling you right now, Seminoles quarterback Tim McLean is special, and look to him to have another spectacular performance. And if he does so, you'll find out in my predictions later. All right, let's get on. Let's go to number two, 7A, number two Edgewater uh, at Niceville up at the Panhandle. Yeah, so Edgewater is 7-2 and two with impressive wins over number four Osceola and Winter Park on the road and blowout wins over Vieira and Boone, but suffered two blowout losses to number one nationally ranked IMG and number 15 nationally ranked Jones. Niceville comes in with a perfect 11-0 record, but 40% of their wins coming to under 500 teams or just at 500 teams with blowout wins over Fort Walton Beach, Mosley, where my mom went to school, Pace, and Leon, and a huge win over previously number four ranked North Florida team, Fleming Island. Edgewater's defense only is giving up 20 points per game compared to Niceville with 13. Edgewater's offense is scoring an average of 32 points per game compared to Niceville with only 17. And uh, Edgewater, uh, um, Edgewater's Arizona State commit. Tommy Hill is a player to watch. Special kid. Even one game, I think he scored almost five or six touchdowns. I mean, the kid is phenomenal. In my opinion, one of the best in the area. Um, and the Niceville senior quarterback, Trey Wainwright. 133 for 184 passing, 2,584 yards, 33 touchdowns, three interceptions, and also had a rushing touchdown. Niceville seems to be Edgewater's biggest test thus far in the playoffs. And we got number three, six, eight, number three, Blake Mineola. Hosting St. Augustine. Yes, so um, 6, uh, 6A, number 3, Lake Mineola, has been questioned all year about their strength of schedule with blowout wins over Toho, East Ridge, Pasco, Traveris, Leesburg, Landa Lakes, uh, and Largo. But they do have impressive wins over previous unbeaten Boca Siega and top-ranked Gaither, um, who is obviously number 2 in the entire state uh, in 6A. St. Augustine comes into 10-2 and two with impressive wins over Escambia and last week over Columbia, but have losses to both North North Florida Powers, Bulls, and Bartram Trail. Lake Mineola defense is only giving up seven points per game, while St. Augustine is giving up 18. Lake Mineola offense is scoring an average of 43 points compared to St. Augustine's 39. Lake Mineola player to watch, athlete Robbie Sanders is 55 of 83, 837 yards, 16 touchdowns, two interceptions, has also 80 carries, 462 yards, eight touchdowns, one pick, and one kickoff return touchdown. St. Augustine junior running back uh, Ty Baxter has 107 carries, 854 yards, 14 touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. Lake Mineola, I'm telling you right now, if they win this game, they will win state. I'm telling you right now. All right, right Balin, let's talk about the Cure Classic All Star game next Thursday. Sorry, we have one more game. Oh, you cannot game. leave out those Cowboys, oh, Stan LaForce. Get on it. You cannot. Number four, Osceola at Miami Palmetto. Yes, Osceola comes in the 8 2 with blowout wins over Liberty, St. Cloud, Toho, Lake Nona, Palm Harbor, and a very impressive win over Riverview, but suffered two losses to Edgewater on the last play of the game and a blowout loss to Vero Beach on the road. Miami Palmetto comes in with five wins and just one loss to Miami Northwestern but they lost their quarterback in the second quarter of the Dr. Phillips game. Close win over Lake Nona and uh, Trevor Coast in overtime. That's the uh, uh, the similar opponent is Lake Nona. Uh, we obviously know Lake Nona got blown out by Osceola, and they could have won that game over Miami Palmetto in the uh, first round of the or the second round of the playoffs. But Osceola's defense has only given up 12 points per game, Palmetto 9. Osceola's offense is scoring 32 points per game compared to Palmetto's 15. Osceola quarterback four-star Chad Masco is 80 of 131, 1,147 yards, 12 touchdowns, and one interception. He's a player to watch. And the Miami Palmetto's Miami commit, Go Canes, Burchard Smith, has seven rushing touchdowns in their short season. Big time matchup in 8A. All right, let's get on to the Cure Classic next Thursday night. This is not an all-star game. This is a all-star showcase. This is a recruiting showcase. This is where we're telling kids at Balin, U, I, Heath, Low Wood, we had a lot of work to do. We had a lot of good demands Man, on who to put on this roster. And I tell you what, we have got it. Balin, let's start with the Orange County offense. Yeah, so at quarterback, we have Akiva Jr., Merito Meritovic, um, Evans, DJ, Boney. Running back, we have Timber Creek's Adrian Flores, Winter Park, Aaron Rodriguez, Boone, Jaquevius Lovett. Receivers, we have Boone, Parker St. John, Dr. Phillips, Jalen Washington, Dr. Phillips, Jalen Thompson, Winter Park, Riley Simpson, Akoi, Taquan, John. Winter Park's Brayden Black at tight end. Westhorn Tyson Swalback. O-line, East River Alex Strong. East River Evan Thompson. Olympia Jordan Thomas. Timber Creek L to CV Callow. 
Wakaiva, Gunnar Williams, Dr. Phillips, Ronnie Hayes, and Jones, Jacquez Young. That, and our defense. Defense. Defensive end. I got Colonial, Sean Henderson, Jones's, Latravius Seawright, a defensive tackle. Oak Ridge's Barry Duzamil, Jones's Antoine Wells, Olympia's DeAndre Robinson, Winter Park's Louis San Blas, Dr. Phillips, Gerald Greaves, at linebacker. Or Orlando Touchdown Club Player, Player of the Week, Landon Nebelek, Jones, Jonathan Aleem, Miami Commit, Windermere, Amir, Amir, Akoe's Christ Gunn, West, West Orange is Jashari Jones, the Orlando Player. Touchdown Club Defensive Player of the Year. Enough for our nominee. Cornerback, Evans, Amari and Jones, Timber Creek's Josh Sink, Olympia's Miles Benjamin, University High School's, and that's Orlando University, Terrell Keys. Winter, Winter Park's Daniel Snook, Snook Edwards, Edwards, Illinois commit, and, and at safety, Timber, Timber Creek's Trey Lubin, Jones's Darian Hawkins, Oak Ridge's Malachi Young, Young, and the kicker is Colonial's Andrew Cito. Man, the Orange County, County is loaded. They're both loaded. Now, Seminole, Seminole County is made up of Seminole County and private schools, and this is the best of the best. Balin. Talk about the offense. Yeah, so at quarterback, Bishop Moore, Luke Hedrick, and Masters Academy, J.J. Baird, state champ. Running back, Lake Mary, Marquise Jones, Lake Brantley, Noah Hudak, who's obviously a quarterback as well, can be an athlete. Lake Howell, Xavier Evans, wide receiver, Lake Mary, Ron Kimball. Orlando Christian Prep, Jaden Ward, state uh, state winner, Lyman Julius Perez, Oviedo Sebastian Vargas, Bishop Moore, Mark Morrison, Masters Jordan Campbell, at tight end Oviedo Keith Nem Nemesongo, O line Lake Brantley Ben Childers, Lake Howell Garrett Tipton, Lake Mary Robert Perkins, Bishop Moore Matt Prudhomme. Bishop Moore, Trent Allen, Foundation Scotty West, and Trinity Prep Cole Best. That is Seminole County offense. Cole Best, another USF. USF, baby. Go Bulls. All right, let's talk about that defense of Seminole County. At defensive end, you got Bishop Moore's Carlos Bailey Vice, Lake Howell's Anthony Dexter, Windermere Preps, Carlos Ponce de Leon Mendez, defensive tackle. Lake Mary's big guy, Zor Vasquez. Lake Brantley's Julius Stanley. Winter Springs, Marvin Collins, Haggerty's Alex Gazzani, Oviedo's Dominic Charbonnet at linebacker, Haggerty's Wyatt Wilson, Orlando Christian Preps, Chance Connor, Foundation Academy, Grayson LeBlad, Lake Mary's Anthony DePinto, at corner, Oviedo's uh, Tavon Coleman, Masters Academy, Yusef Leak, Lake Mary's Sterl Scott, Orangewood Phenom, Kadarius Roberts, at safety, Lake Brantley's hard-hitting Jonathan Schrager. Lake Highland Prep's Jacob Spafford and another player of the week, Central Florida Christian Academy, Wilkerson St. Just, and the kicker is Lake Howell's Diego Fernandez. Yeah, those are the entire rosters for Seminole and Orange County. That is final. Uh, we have got confirmation on most of, if not all, athletes, all so they will be there. So this is going to be big-time game, obviously, on uh, what December 17th at Winter Park Showalter Field. Kick off at 7 Big time, obviously. Pre-game, it will yeah. be live right here on Varsity Sports Network. It will, and we will have pre-game starting at six o'clock. Both of these teams are fired up. I've talked to a lot of these players, and it's very simple. These guys will practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If they don't show up Monday, don't show up at all. Yep. And we are very serious about getting this out there so that college coaches get another look at the talent right here in the 407, Baylin. Yeah, I'm excited. I get to see three of the kids I train. DJ Boney, Eastern Kentucky commit at quarterback. He is all in for this game and is excited to showcase his abilities and why he's big time. Also, uh, we have J.J. Baird from Masters Academy. I'm really Really excited. He scored three touchdowns in the state championship game. He is a state champion. And then Junior Mar Maradovic, I think, is one of the best quarterbacks in the entire state, at least in the top five for me. Uh, statistically, if you watch his film, Dan, we talked about it uh, earlier in the year. When you watch his film, he looks big time. D1, no questions asked. Should be signing next week. Um, he's got a couple opportunities, but, man, this game's going to help everybody involved. And then uh, Luke Hedrick, who I do not train, uh, a coach's son. He had a phenomenal year as well. Um, I all four quarterbacks, I'm really excited to see in this big-time matchup. You know, and, and the thing is, is a lot of people are probably asking, well, what about kids from Edgewater? What about kids from Apopka? What about kids from Seminole? 
Well, well first, first and foremost, foremost this, this game is Orange and Seminole County, County, but these guys, since they're still playing in the playoffs, have automatically been taken off that roster. Yeah. And, and what we have left is still some amazing talent, the best of the best outside of that. And we're excited about these kids hitting the field and proving to colleges, to each other. This is a grudge match, man. This is the last time Orange versus Seminole. It's also an opportunity for a lot of these private school kids that have heard that they can't play with the big boys. Well, this is it. They're going to be playing with those big boys. Yeah, and I got to coach this game last year as the offensive coordinator. We got the W 14-7. to Halftime was raining, but man, this is a special event for all players involved. Congratulations to all the players that we just named uh, live here on VSN Orlando and WDBO High School Football Scoreboard Show. Yeah, you know, so, you know, we're going we're gonna to be uh, we're, we're going to be uh, looking, uh, looking at, at more of that going into next year. year. Look on Twitter. We're going to be posting more information. But when we get back, Balin's predictions are coming up right here on the high school football scoreboard. We'll see you in a few. Nice. That was our third segment, guys. Now we have one more segment. Obviously, it's my predictions. All right, guys, now I've had a lot of heat, especially in the Lake Mineola community. I cannot wait to go over these predictions on why I chose what I chose. But there are four teams remaining in Central Florida, and here they are. Uh, number one, Seminole. Number two, Edgewater. Number three, Lake Mineola. And number four, Osceola. This, these, those four teams uh, all year round have been in our top, at least our top six. Um, obviously, Jones High School is a team that we were high on that I thought personally you had the best chance of winning a state championship. Now it looks like Seminole or Popka. Uh, Edgewater is a nice road. I think uh, Osceola does find themselves um, in, in, a, in a state championship berth, maybe. We'll see in our predictions. But um, we have a good good four teams to represent uh, Central Florida, and we should be very proud of, of who's representing us and, and what they stand for and the coaches are involved in these games. So, so Bobby, you and I called quite a few games together this year. That Cure Bowl roster. Were there, were there any names there that really stood out to kind of see you, see, see how, how they play in this and how, and how they play with each other? Well, we co we covered a lot. Um, of course, the teams that we covered a little bit. Um, the one, the couple guys, the Aaron Rodriguez out of Winter Park, definitely a running back that was very good when we covered that game over there yeah. with Timber Creek. They did a very good job over there. Adrian Flores as well from Timber Creek. We covered that Winter Park Timber Creek game. Those two running backs I remember very clearly out of that game right there. The other games we've covered, you know, Tyson Swaback out yeah, of West Orange. He's a gamer, man. I mean, he's a football on. player. He's yeah, a, he's there's a, a difference between play being every a player, player and yes. a football player. Man, I got, to, I got to watch that kid literally grow up in front of my eyes. He played 7 on 7 with me since he was in the sixth or uh, the seventh grade, and we've won championships together. I remember when he was a little twig. Now he's a big monster uh, playing linebacker and uh, tight end and H-back, but the kid is special, just a hard-nosed Football player. And, and a lot of Definitely people have asked, you know, why are we putting Tyson at tight end? He didn't play really a whole lot of tight end. It's very simple. He's going to play at multiple positions. And a lot of these guys are going to play. You know, you're going to see some wide receivers playing corner. You're going to see some corners playing wide receiver. You're going to see some linebackers playing running back. Quarterback playing a running back. You're going to see quarterbacks playing running back. So, again, it's an opportunity for these guys to get some serious film as, the, you know, we have early signing day next week. And, and, and that's, that's always big. big. I, think I think it's the December 16th. 16th. So yeah. 16th, the day before the Wednesday. game. Wednesday. We Beyond today. that, these colleges are looking at, okay, who's off the board, who do we need to go next, who have we missed? And this is the who have we missed game. This is why it's so important for us, Bobby, myself, Balin, Heath, to be able to talk about these kids so that these college coaches get a little bit more information that's biased. You know, they want to hear this stuff. And, um, I'm looking forward to, like you mentioned before, Dan, the, the private schools uh, getting an opportunity. They say they don't, but they don't play up to that level and stuff like that. Well, the level, the field, the, the field is level right now. The playing, it's a level playing field for all of these kids. I'm looking forward to Kadarius Roberts out of Orange. There you go. There I you want go. to see Roberts. him perform with everybody else. Yeah. On this. Here's and another I think name. He's gonna be phenomenal. Here's another name. Wilkerson St. Joseph. I like that. Yes. I'm telling you from right Central now from Florida, CFCA. Yes. That yes. kid, I remember talking about him last year and this year, and I'm like, whoa, that kid is special. Yes, so, so, so you know, and this is the other thing that a lot of people don't know. If I named you Orlando Touchdown Club Player of the Week, you're automatic you were automatically on the forty man roster. Mm. And that's how we took this whole process this serious. 
and there's been a lot of work. I tell you, I was teasing Balin and, and, and Bobby earlier. I'm going to apply for the general manager job with the Jaguars next week because I pretty much did that minus the salary cap. And uh, it, 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 this whole process has been exciting. I think you picked the team tedious. that could probably beat the Jaguars. We've had to tell a lot of kids that they can't play in this game, and that's tough. But I truly believe we have a, you know, 40-man roster allows us to get guys more playing time and get them in different positions and let them go out and play. But forget, this is still Orange for Summer County. This is still pride. This is one last time to strap it up because the reality is this game, probably about 70 to 80 percent of those guys this will be the last game they ever play. yeah this, yep. we're about 10 seconds away another player i'm looking forward to parker st john special talent the receiver position looking for him to make a statement against some good talent All right, this, this is, is the Coach Dan, Dan LaForest back. back. Welcome, Welcome back, back to the High School Football Scoreboard Show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, benefits HR technology, payroll, scalable HR services, HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR, HR that makes the difference. We are live from the, the, the Gators Dockside here at Hunt Club, right, right here in Apopka. Balin loves his all-you-can-eat wings. <laughs> what other menu item did you love tonight, Balin? Man, I, I, I went back with the uh, Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak, uh, nachos, amazing. Like I said, it is a, uh, obviously you have to request it. It's not on the menu. But, hey, I, instead of getting the meat or chicken, hey, uh, throw some Philly meat on there. And Heath Ziegler, uh, that was for you, man. Um, I love you, brother, and I know you're listening, man. I can't wait to see you back on the show. Yeah. But, yeah, we got the Philly cheesesteak nachos, man. All right, Balin, you're on the clock. Number four, Osceola at Miami Palmoto, Palmetto, what do you got? I have Osceola reaching the state championship and beating Palmetto. Again, the only game I can compare is a Lake Nona game, and Osceola completely annihilated them, and Palmetto squeaked by. So I like that, and that's a, a common co opponent. So Osceola Cowboys with a K in the state championship. Number three, Lake Mineola hosting St. Augustine. Lake Mineola, from this point out, they are winning state. I'm calling it right now. That's my prediction. Lake Mineola blows out another team and goes right to Tallahassee. Number, Number two, two Edgewater, Edgewater got to travel eight, eight hours to the Panhandle. This, this is a good one. This is a good one, but I'm picking the Eagles in this game. They're going to beat Niceville. Again, I mentioned the, the schedule and the strength of it. It's not that impressive. Edgewater takes care of business on the road in impressive fashion, reaching the 7A state championship yet again. All right, Balin, our game of the week, the Bokey Boys from Seminole. Taking it to the Hokey Hay at the APK, number five of Popka. What do you got? Man, I've been high on Jaquan Loman every single week. He is the difference maker in every football game. I'm looking forward to him having a great game. But it's USF commit Tim McLean taking care of business. Seminole beats Apopka and reaching the 8A state championship game. And I think they win it all this year. You know, he may not be right, but he is bailing. And uh, I tell you what. I'll be right this week. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of football left here, and, and, and we're excited. We hope these guys stay healthy. We have some, some great football this Friday night. Balin, what's, what's your biggest, you know, outside of the Apopka Seminole That's game? That's such a good game. You know, what, what is the one game you really got your eye on? I really have my eye on the Edgewater-Niceville game. Edgewater, I think, again, is the better team, but Niceville is undefeated, and they come in with a lot of momentum. Mitchell surprised me last week. Mitchell almost pulled off that upset, had an opportunity to do so. Uh, but Edgewater took care of business and winning in a close game. I think that's going to carry on and show that they can win in blowout fashion and in close matchups. I just think Edgewater with a good Coach Duke team uh, is, is hard to beat. I don't care if it's on the road or at home. You know, and again, Bobby Latmore and I were calling the Seminole game last week, and I kept checking score stream and going, I mean, I got nervous. I'm sitting there watching an incredible game in front of me, but yet I'm trying to keep up with the scores. Yeah. And it was nerve-wracking watching these scores. You know, that Apopka Lake Mary game was extremely tight. Mitchell and Edgewater, again, down to the wire. And, and, and again, Jones was back and forth until the fourth quarter before Jesuit. You know, and I think Jesuit – is a much better team than we give him credit for. Jo uh, Coach Elijah Williams, I spoke to him the day after. He said, I don't mind losing the state champion every year. He believes Jesuits that good. So we'll see how they uh, they rack up uh, against American Heritage. Uh, but, yeah, I think that last year we had three teams represent, and I think we'll have three teams yet again. And, again, my predictions, Seminole goes to state, uh, Edgewater goes to state, and Osceola goes to state. All right. That's it. This is the Coach Dan LaForest with Balin Trujillo here live on Varsity Sports Network. 
with, with the, the uh, high school football, football scoreboard show. We are out. See you next week. See you. So that is it, guys. That was our show for ESPN and WDBO. We're still live with VSN Orlando. We have about two minutes left. Um, Bobby, what are your thoughts, man, of this whole entire show and what have you heard so far? I want to keep this going throughout the year, man. Oh, yeah. Let's keep it rolling. I think so. Like, we got a couple more, you know, with yeah. the WDBO with ESPN Radio. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I would really love to see this move forward in the VSN Orlando. You guys yeah. do a great job. So oh, it's going to be a lot that. of fun. We got, a lot of, we lot have, of things we got recruiting heat. coming up. This year, Recruiting. hopefully, we're going to have seven, seven on seven, guys. Seven on Florida seven. Fire. Florida Fire, seven on seven. That's a program that I'm in charge of here in Orlando. You better stay well, tuned. We also have, have some spring football, athletes. hopefully, coming up pretty yep, soon. Spring well, football. We also, from what I understand, Dan and I have talked freshman about this. JV. Freshman JV coming yeah, up cool. next. Yeah. You know, that will be cool. In the winter, coming up after the first of the year. Yeah. We're just, a lot of football. A lot yeah. of football coming up. I think we need to keep the Orlando football programs up in the, everybody's face a little bit with these programs that we're going to do, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I, I've been saying this to a lot of my clients, a lot of my friends, is Winston Churchill once said, with chaos comes opportunity, and I think there's some great opportunity to really get behind high school sports right now because it's a great outlet not only for these kids but also for us as a community. And, um, you know, I just want to thank Bobby Latmore, yeah, you know, bringing you, Bobby, VSN yeah, into and this fold and allow us to come, you know, face-to-face with you uh, versus just being on the radio all the time. You know, there's so many different things that can be done. And, you know, we got some things we're working on. I can tell you that. And uh, keep your fingers crossed because uh, we expect a big 2020. Bobby, you want to close this out? 2021. 2021. 2020 Jeez. is over, hey, buddy. Don't yeah, I'm done with 2020. We're done with 2020. Hey, you might see a Beat True show. <laughs> Live from Watch Gators out. here, Dockside here in Apopka. It's been fantastic. Remember, Gators Dockside is the official watch party. Locations all over Central Florida, 14 locations for the Cure Bowl coming up. That's next week, folks. That's Thursday. Yeah, That's Thursday. from tomorrow. Thursday. So Do not make dinner plans. plans. Make, make plans, plans to be at your local really Gators dinner. Dockside Absolutely. to watch that game because I can tell you, we're going to be putting on a show for you guys and giving you a lot of insight behind that game. There's a lot of content, including, remember, the Cure Bowl is about finding a cure for cancer. And we have some, we got a great feature on some of our local high school coaches who are cancer survivors. No question. And we are looking forward to that. Yep. Game time kickoffs at 7. Pregame starts at 5. Two hour pregame show that we're going to have next Thursday night. So it's going to be a big time blowout. That night is also starts the state championships. We've got other things going on around, crazy times. So um, it's very, very busy, but I think we can handle it. What do you got. guys, what do you think? We got yep. it. And I'll be covering that game on the sideline and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing a very close matchup within the first couple of minutes. I, I like Orange County here. Oh, <laughs> We're making predictions. predictions Orange County. On, the predi- his prediction comes next Thursday. Yes. And we've got yes. to put the headgear on or something. Uh, like also, that. Uh, early signing day Seminole period head. next uh, <laughs> next Wednesday, the 16th. Look forward to seeing some of your local athletes signing to uh, big-time programs big time. Yes. And, and congratulating them. Yes. You'll see that throughout Twitter and stuff. So be sure to follow all of us on Twitter and social medias uh, at VSN Orlando, at High School Football Scoreboard Show. Um, and then, obviously, stay tuned to what's happening next, and, and we'll be back next week. And, and, and one last thing. Local business. Businesses, we are looking for sponsors that do want to advertise on BSN. And like I said, we got some great programming coming up in 2021. That's going to do it. Everybody signing off for Balin, for Dan, and I'm Bobby. We'll see you next time here on the uh, High School Scoreboard Football Show here on BSN.